There's uh, one of my clients who lives in New Brunswick, and uh, it's very interesting. He's he used to be a fisherman. Yeah. And I gave him uh, I gave him a couple. I gave him a little bit of uh, seawater gans I had made in Barletta. He was here a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And I uh, showed him what to do and make some uh, paint pads and stuff. And he has uh, a little tumor on the neck area on his uh, tonsil, I believe it was. Still a little bit tough. And uh, he just got back to me last night and said uh, he done, he's not sure, but he feels like the tumor's shrinking. Oh. And he's been using right. uh, the paint pad from the seawater gans. Yeah. <laughs> I said, just keep me posted. Uh, you go, I go, what do you think I gave it to you for? It is so we can uh, get uh, get a way to spread uh, what, uh, yeah, what have uh, happened with with him also. Of course. Uh, have you made uh, a lot of these pads? Not a lot, no. Uh, when I was in Barletta, you know, I made some, but and I was giving it uh, away to a lot of uh, relatives and friends there. I only brought a small amount back with me. Yeah. You can only carry so much in your suitcase. Uh, I made I made some dry until I brought back. Uh, if you can see it. Ah. Oh yeah. That's that's yeah. a lot of that's a lot of seawater gans to make that. <laughs> yeah, it is. I know. It was. Uh, I was. Uh, I believe I have twenty-five liter, but I just get a little glass out of it. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I uh, like. I, I think you know. I used to sell uh, ocean water, deep sea ocean water. And ours, uh, our product was uh, concentrated. Yeah. So uh, it was approximately three times the strength of uh, regular ocean water or sea water. Uh, the only thing that was removed from it to concentrate it was uh, fresh uh, uh, H2O. Nothing else uh, would be removed. It was a physical process. No heat or chemicals were used. And anyway, I just, uh, I just made a batch uh, a few days ago, and I'm still washing it from that stuff because I have a little bit left. And uh, you get quite a bit more because it's concentrated. So you get approximately three times more of the GANs. So I'm going to see uh, how that compares with the sea from Barletta versus the uh, ocean. Um, like I said, my, my, my whole thing would be to uh, go, you know, certain distance from any shorelines and uh, go out of certain depths because uh, the water... Uh, when you go down certain depths, it's different. Uh, just imagine the ocean body. Uh, it's the blood of the earth. And, you know, ocean water is the same blood that runs through our veins. There's no difference. The mineral to mineral composition, the ratios are identical pretty much. The only yeah. thing that's different is, is co it's more concentrated than our, than our bloodstream. So... Uh, deep, uh, are you uh, taking it from that? Well, the uh, the product that we were selling was not really taken at depths, but the reason I'm I mentioned we need to go depths is because another friend of mine who went out with this client of mine, uh, that's how I met him, who was a fisherman. He went out with him uh, several years ago on his boat, and they were taking samples of uh, the ocean water out there in New Brunswick at different depths. Yeah. And he had approximately, I think it was about 100 uh, feet or 150 feet of hose from my memory that they had on board. So they were taking it at different depths. And when they reached the level of the hole, all the holes down at the furthest that they had, the, the length, the, when that water came finally through to the surface, everybody on the, on the boat was in awe because the water looked like a crystalline, he told me. It was just beautiful, completely different at the other, than the other lower depths. So yeah. this is why I, I know from uh, all the research I've done in ocean water, um, the ocean, you know, it, it's, it's keeping itself 
in a, it's trying to keep itself in as a healthy state as it possibly can. Just think of our bodies. Our bodies are trying yeah. to keep its, you know, itself clean all the time. The ocean's the same thing. It's the blood of the earth. So it's, it's, it's trying to get rid of all the waste toxicity. And it, what it does is it pushes it to the shores or sinks some of it to the bottom. So there's a body within the whole ocean within the center it's a it's a big area of several miles in, in certain cases of an area where it's in a pristine magical solution and there's nothing in there except the 90 plus odd minerals and all the bacteria that needs to be there so it's in a, it keeps itself in that state like man is doing an excellent job trying to destroy all the oceans but if the oceans we were able to kill them uh, I think the life on this planet would cease to exist because it's the blood of the earth. Yeah. So the, the, uh, if we go back into the late 1800s, a fellow by the name of René Quinton, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, is a Frenchman, scientist. Yeah. And he was uh, uh, doing many, many experiments with ocean water. And he found that ocean water was identical to our blood. So he started collecting, uh, you know, capturing the stray dogs and started experimenting on them by injecting them with uh, ocean water. And uh, he found he needed to dilute it down to the same strength as the blood. And uh, he, when he uh, diluted it with distilled water, the dogs would die. So that's something very interesting. Um, then he used uh, spring water, and the dogs thrived. So you got to understand that the uh, the distilled water does not have that life-sustaining substance in it, probably because it's man-made. Uh, it's it's pretty much dead, I guess. So he needed to use the spring water to, you know, dilute it down and bring it and keep that life force within it. Now, he found that there was a certain time of year where the plankton bloom would be at its highest, uh, you know, growth, certain time of the year. And, and that's the, the, the water he found from the ocean that uh, worked the best from all his experiments. And, uh, he, he continued doing a lot of these experiments on dogs and different species. And his, through all his years of ex experimenting, he said that he called it ocean, liquid, uh, ocean plasma. He said that the ocean plasma was a universal blood, did not matter what species. Now, if we look at what Mr. Kesh teaches us, two ingredients you need to create all life, ocean water and air. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes sense. What, yeah. like what Mr. Cash is telling and teaching us from what Rene Quinton's research, it makes perfect sense. He was able to inject any species with this ocean plasma and they thrived. Now, he was able to completely transfuse a dog's blood equal to its weight with the ocean plasma. And the dog became much more healthy. Like, I'm talking no more blood in the dog, only ocean plasma. And within, I think it was, there's the experiment, uh, it's, it's listed on one of these websites that he did. And uh, within a few days, I think it was three or four days, all the hemoglobin and everything would return perfectly, actually better than what it was before from his experiments. Then he started doing experiments on humans, and uh, he was injecting them. Uh, weekly with small doses and he helped heal thousands and thousands and thousands of people in France in the late 1800s early 1900s of all types of diseases by just injecting them with this ocean plasma he devised now back then uh, that was the time where the pharmaceutical industry started uh, coming alive and uh, what had happened was uh, they banned ocean water therapy in France, made it illegal. 
and they ended up sending him to the war at that time and he got killed uh sounds very fishy they probably killed him i don't know but um he's uh, there's a statue in one of the centers in france of him he's he's famous in france but it's he's very uh he's not well known outside of france he's he had a, he writ, he wrote a book and it's in french it's available online you can download it um so uh like there's very little info in, in english available from the people who have uh, translated it but uh his work is uh, amazing. Like the, the, he's got there's photos of the people before and after of the diseases they've had. Uh, it's just amazing what he's done with the ocean water. Now that's okay. one guy. Can you can you tell the name again so we can? Uh... Rene Quinton. Um, the, the, let me see if I can find the website here. Uh, if I find the website, <clears throat> I'll send you the link. Give me one sec here. I know I have it here somewhere. Yeah, usually we have a lot of stuff on the computer, so it's not always. Oh, yeah. Okay, here I found it. Let me get back here. I'll put it in the chat if I can. Okay, that's the website, uh, yeah. and uh, you can read all about his work, and uh, there's a lot of stuff on here. Now, there was also uh, another fellow by the name of, uh, let me see if I can get his book here, Ray, um, Maynard Murray, Sea Energy Agriculture. Wow. That's, that's him there. He was a doctor and a scientist. And he did a lot of research with ocean water. And then there was a fellow by the name of Charles Walter. He passed away a few years back. He redid it with more updated info. But it's basically a newer version with a little more research in here. Yeah. And they're both pretty good books. Uh, but we're at much different levels right now with our knowledge. Um, but uh, Rene, I mean, uh, Maynard Murray, what he did, he, he, he found the same thing, that ocean water was the same as our blood. And he started getting samples from the ocean from all over the world, from the military back then. You were able to do stuff like that. This was in the 1940s, at probably, 30s, 40s. And they would bring him samples, right? <laughs> you can't do that anymore. <laughs> but, um, so he, he started doing experiments with the ocean water on plants. And uh, what he found was you can't give most plants straight ocean water. If it's too strong, they would die. So he was able to uh, work around that by diluting it. And he found that rainwater worked the best for diluting ocean water to feed it to plants. So straight ocean water, if you dilute it approximately 25, 30 to 1, with fresh water or rainwater, you can feed it to pretty much any plant. And the plants just love it. They thrive. Yeah. So um, he did many experiments on plants uh, and a lot of experiments on tomatoes. And what he found was when he fed plants uh, ocean water, they not only looked more vibrant the aromas were much more stronger and pleasant the colors were more intense uh, after harvesting the shelf life was longer and i've done all these experiments and and I, i'll you know i'll say the same thing uh the once you taste food grown with ocean water it's at a whole different level but uh, uh, we, are, uh, we are thinking of uh, this uh, to to fix the seed again, uh, so it goes to the balance again. Uh, that's what uh, we really are into uh, right now, because uh, this is the season where they are spreading all of the the, uh, the fields with uh, all kinds of uh, stuff. So we want to to get it back to the to what it really was uh, in the beginning, uh, the seeds. Uh, have you tried something uh, on on seeds? Uh, how uh, how it's 
to function that way because uh, we have to buy the seeds from uh, from the government, and it's the same in uh, in your area, isn't it? Uh, well, there's seeds available from all different sources, but are you talking about trying to get the seed to revert back to original strain? Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I found uh, with my own experiments, uh, there was uh, a spinach that uh, one of my friend's father brought from Italy many, many years ago. And they were growing it for many years in their garden here in the Toronto area. And this spinach would grow maybe yeah. uh, we we see it in uh, in a video on the, on the website huh? on my website uh, on the one website i don't know if uh, it's only yours but uh, uh, we see this uh, high spinach yeah uh, yeah what had happened was i gave him some ocean water years ago and he started feeding his garden and the spinach went crazy it it, it spread everywhere and then yeah. he gave me some and I planted it in my garden and it went nuts. It just, it went like 12, 12 13 feet tall. Yeah, still, uh, this, I, was, this was uh, 2010 or something. This yeah, year. yes, several years yeah. ago. So yeah. I still have some growing. Uh, it, 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 uh, it feeds, it, it, you let it go to seed and it just spreads. But it, it went nuts. It went nuts after he fed Oshawa. That was the only plant that we seen that actually completely changed from what it was. But um, Maynard Murray, from his experiments, found the same thing. Some, some plants that were hybrid would revert back. Now, yeah. the, the, what Mr. Kesh was uh, showing us, that if you soak them in the uh, CO2 GANS water or just put them near the energy of it, it should get re re revert back to its uh, original strain. So I, I, I think that the uh, seawater GANS or ocean water GANS will do the same. I th it's at a higher field strength than just the ocean water itself. We're going to energy versus matter state. Yeah. So just to give you a little more on Maynard Murray, he, he was able to uh, uh, do a lot of experiments on plants and uh, he found that when he grew tomatoes, he, got, he did a mineral analysis and they picked up 56 of the 90 plus elements that are in ocean water every time. That was their genetic capability. He, he, he tested tomatoes from all different growing mythologies, and he never found one with more than 18 minerals. That's a big difference, 56 to 18. So you can see only when he fed a dilute ocean water, they were able to pick up 56. No other way of growing, they would do, they would do that. So the ocean water contains all the information for that plant to pick up those minerals that it needs, which is 56 in its genetic capability. Sweet potatoes were like 70 minerals, and different, uh, every, every, every plant has, has its own genetic makeup of how many minerals it will pick up when you feed it ocean water in diluted form. Yeah. Uh, he also did experiments on animals. And he uh, would feed animals, uh, control, you know, regular grown uh, feed, and then he would grow the same feed in ocean water. And the health in the animals was night and day in health, way more healthier, less problems, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's all, it's, some experiments are in the book and everything. But uh, I knew Don Jansen, who was, uh, uh, who was a farmer and bought Maynard Murray's experimental farm way back. And uh, I learned a lot from Don Jansen. He, I don't even know if he's still alive. I haven't spoken to him for several years. He was uh, he was in his 70s back when I met him, but uh, he might be still alive. He, he did a lot of experiments as well, and he told me a lot of things about the Maynard Murray's and everything. So, um, you, you know, when you taste the food <laughs> grown with ocean water, you don't want to eat anything else. Let's, let's put it that way. I've, I've tried it on all types of fruit trees over here, all different vegetables, you know, tomatoes, cucumbers, all sorts of things. We've, we've tried it on everything, between all my friends and everything. And because uh, working with farmers, I think I mentioned before, it was a losing battle. Um, most of them, not all, most of them, the majority, don't care about what they grow. All they worry about is yield, which is sad. That's all they get paid for. You know, I, you know how many farmers I, I went into would say, oh, I'll take a gallon for my garden, but uh, I won't be using this for, uh, for selling the food. And I'm thinking, what kind of person would think like that, you know? They'd, they'd sell garbage, but they'd, you know, 
keep the good stuff for themselves. That's pretty sad. That's pretty low level of human mentality. You know what I mean? And this is what was what I seen out there, and it it, it really bothered me working with these people. And uh, every time I would go to these farm shows, I'd see the most unhealthiest people in one building at the same time, because most of them are growing it with chemicals. You yeah. know. Like uh, e even the organic farmers, there's only a small percentage that are really care about what they're growing. Most of them are in the same category as the chemical farmers, same mentality. So, you know, hopefully we can change that around and, you know, put the love back into the food supply. That's what's missing. So these yeah. two guys, uh, but I, I, go ahead. I believe that uh, the way to do it is when they do show them that uh, they get to use uh, the GANs uh, and this way. Uh, I believe that's the way to go. Because if they get more, uh, maybe they can get um, more than, uh, uh, than they are used to, maybe get two or three times more, and uh, then it really will uh, spread itself. Uh, I believe yeah. that's the way we, we, we need to, uh, to come. Yeah. Um, because before... it's the thing. Be, it's the same in Norway. Everybody is just thinking of the old school and what they have learned in the school. Right. Yeah. The, uh, before I left Italy, uh, well, last month I was at uh, my uh, children's grandmother's house and they have all fruit trees, like a big piece of land. And, and uh, what I did is we ended up going to the sea because they're not near the sea. It's about 40 minute drive with a friend of mine to get the, uh, some more seawater and we made some gans because I was showing them how to do it. And then I started uh, spraying all the trees with the uh, liquid plasma. And within two weeks, I already started seeing a difference in the trees. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, had, I, I, I taught this uh, friend of mine who's, uh, who's also diabetic and, uh, it was about three, four days later after we made it. I, I used to go to his place to use the internet because the, where I was uh, wasn't a good signal. So he goes to me, there's something strange happening. He goes, last three days, uh, my blood sugar has been normal. I've never had this happen before. He goes, could it be the water? <laughs> I, go, I go, yeah, what do you think I, I'm teaching you how to make this stuff? <laughs> anyway, I spoke to him uh, I think about a week ago, and he got off. He got off pretty much all his diabetic medication just with the plasma, liquid plasma water from the seawater gans. Yeah, yeah. And there's another fellow, uh, my dad's cousin. Same thing. I put him on that before I left Barletta. He was near Barletta, and he got off his uh, diabetic medication, and uh, he it restored his breathing. He had a very severe breathing problem, but I had also given him a, a pain pen. But uh, which I put the seawater gans inside as well. So I, I, I like the seawater gans because uh, my way of thinking is from what I've uh, experienced with seawater and ocean water, it brings balance back to the plants yeah. and the animals who eat it, the, the, the plants that are grown with it. Because uh, the way we were selling ocean water for agriculture is we would say, we give the plants a buffet of all the minerals in a perfect balance and we let the plant decide what it needs. Instead of the science way, a plant needs NPK. Yeah, they grow, but there's <laughs> nothing in there and all the insects destroy them because they're, they're, they're empty. So that's the way we were selling ocean water. And if you think about plasma, it's similar. It takes what it needs. Yeah. So the ocean is in a plasmatic state. If you take it in the proper zones, it's in a beautiful state. That's why we need to get organized and try and find a way to get the uh, deep sea stuff. So I'm working with this uh, client of mine to see if we can do something, if there's interest for people. Uh, he's got all friends with, that are fishermen, so there's a possibility we can uh, do it through him. Um, you know? uh, yeah, we, I was out and, uh, and get the seawater uh, from here, and 
and uh, here uh, and here we have uh, uh, like uh, you know we have the midnight sun too in this time oh so, really uh, we always have the sun so it's really something special with uh, with everything here and i feel uh, the power uh, where i should go and get the water uh, and uh, it's like uh, it's like uh, how can i tell it it's like a river under the sea that come all the way up to uh, to the area where i was picking up the seawater so uh, so it's really a uh, at the place, I really something special. Uh, it's like a river that uh, put up up to the uh, to the uh, area where the. I'm losing you. Yeah, yeah. it was uh, wonderful, and with <laughs> with with the midnight sun in the background, uh, yeah. It's something uh, we also have the snow on the top, so uh, uh, we will send you a picture. Yeah, sounds so wonderful. You can see it. So, th this is basically with my background. Okay. This is basically, you know, through my experience of working with uh, ocean water and, and doing the research on that for the last uh, several years. And uh, you know the uh, the other thing I've I've uh, did a lot of research was with frequencies in the 432 hertz. Uh, as you guys know, uh, that's uh, the number of creation. Um, Kesh, Mr. Kesh did a teaching on it. I think it was either 56 or 57th workshop. He goes in detail about 432 how it works in in the in creation. So there's uh, we're using all these things, you know, to uh, and, and it's all come to be with the work of plasma. It's all interrelated, very interestingly. So uh, like ocean water, I, I don't know why Mr. Kesh keeps uh, putting it down and you know, worried about it because if we're, if we're talking about plasma, as he teaches us, the body can only, only takes what it needs. This is where I'm a little bit confused. If the body only takes what it needs, why do we have to worry? Yeah, yeah, that, you know, that's all something I, I always... I, I'm, I'm a little confused. I, for, I forgot to ask him this, but then we have the uh, lead GANs, which is very draining to people. If the body only takes what it needs, why is it draining to people, that, that, that one substance? I don't understand that. But see, when, we, when we're using seawater GANs, this is where I like that because it's already in a perfect balanced state. It's the same as our blood, where we come from. So I'm not scared. I'm not worried at all about using seawater gans. I'm not at all. And uh, I, uh, how are you cleaning it? Well, I, I'm, what I'm doing, um, I was using an ozone generator. Yeah. Ah. I was ozonating for about 15, 20 minutes for approximately a, a four or five liter container. Yeah. And then I and then I warm it up to body temperature. Yeah. That's that's the information that I feel I needed to do. I warm it up, and then I'll I'll have some uh, about a hundred mil of a uh, good clean source of water, N not necessarily distilled, good filtered water, good spring water, any good source of fresh water. I bring yeah, it to I boil. Was, uh, I, I was thinking of uh, using uh, the water that we have up in the mountain there. Because sure. It's very, uh, and it's uh, it's snow on the top too, so it's so always coming there. It's raining. Yeah. But sure. it's going through the ground too, so uh, so it should be uh, much better uh, I, than well, uh, using this. Uh, this well, remember the experiment I told you with Rene Quinton about the distilled water. The dogs died when he diluted it with distilled water. This, this is why I'm. Kind of hesitant about distilled. I'd rather use rainwater, which is has an energy. Distilled, hmm. I use all filtered water and stuff. I have filter, I have a vortex in my home and the pipes. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Can you guys hear me? 
That's no uh, problem. Uh, I lost sorry. you for a second. Yeah, yeah, I see that. So uh, you were talking about uh, the uh, the rainwater. Yeah. Again. Like I, uh, instead of using distilled, I'd I'd rather use rainwater or a spring water, natural spring water, or a good quality filtration system. Like in my home, I have all I have a vortex in my house pipe, and I have all good filters. So I don't worry about because the water that I use is all all good. But uh, I worry a little bit about distilled from the experiments from Rene Quinton where the dogs died. Yeah. It's, got a strange energy they distilled unless we we change it with plasma then that would be different if we add some liquid plasma to it once we already made it then i don't see a problem with it we no i was uh, i was also thinking of this uh, this if we uh, if we uh, if we run a, a, tube, a, a tube that we have a co2 gans around uh, of course the uh, uh, that has to be uh, better than uh, using the same uh, water. Um, yeah, I guess. Like, uh, remember that test the guy in Australia did? He used uh, seawater GANs and uh, CO2 GANs on his uh, plants for experiments. Yeah. And he had great results. So... I'm gonna... I'm start, I started planting some stuff in here. I'm, I'm spraying everything with the... Uh, liquid plasma of seawater and we'll see how it goes yeah <clears throat> so uh that, you know it's uh you know i've had the uh, pretty good results with all the people i've shared it with um i've mm -hmm. seen changes in in pretty much everybody i've, I've shared it with like giving them pain pads and stuff uh one woman uh was uh walking over bent over one of my children's aunt with severe pain in her back and I gave her a pad and she thanked me a million times because she's able to walk much better now. Um, I've, yeah. uh, I don't even remember all the people I've given it to, but everybody's noticed some positive effects from the uh, seawater GANs. Uh, uh, how, uh, how strong the, uh, uh, how, uh, you have uh, dried it up, uh, all the sea, uh, sea GANs, so it's dried powder. And uh, then you, I, I, yeah. I, I what I do is I put a little bit, uh, I, uh, I have a little bit on the bottom of a bottle. Yeah. And I'll put a few crumbs of the dry stuff in there as well. Just because it's, uh, when it's dry, you have, it's, it's a little bit different energy. They're both powerful. And then yeah. I use, and then I use the water. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not the, the, uh, the, the thing you have in the, in the bottom. Here's I never the use the GANs itself. I just use the water for making yeah. pain pads and everything else. Uh, in my pain pen, I did use a little bit of the actual uh, GANs in there, a very small amount. Yeah. And it's, uh, I've, I've helped a lot of people with their just their photographs from all over the world, just doing their photographs. Oh, just doing the photographs. Well, you oh. have to understand energy. There's no time space. Yeah. And this is what, yeah. I've, what I've learned through the research we've done in uh, 432 Hertz. Uh, we used to have a, a talk show. Uh, we started a project called the Divine Water Project. Nothing's a coincidence how it happens. <laughs> and we were we were we set it up to bring uh, water back into its divine state on Mother Earth. And we ran this talk show uh, radio thing for a couple of months. We didn't have any money to do anything, but we then we put it out in the ether because we says it's not just because we have no money. It's not going to stop. And if you oh. look at the bottom of my email, it's still there from yeah. several years ago. So we used to do a water blessing every time. And I had made a device which uh, sent out a scalar wave, and we used to use 432 hertz. And uh, we would uh, do this water blessing for 30 seconds. Everybody would uh, be silent, and I'd turn the thing on and uh, I'd tell everybody, just imagine the, uh, the energy going into your water and, uh, you know, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, it's you know, like a prayer, but it's yeah, totally yeah, yeah. Well, so. Everybody, everybody noticed the water changed. So one day, I I decided I'm going to do something different to do a test. So I have rose oil as one of my favorite essential oils, and I put it on top of the device, and I didn't say anything, and we did our water blessing, 
And uh, everybody, I said, okay, so everybody, uh, you know, taste the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, does anybody smell anything? Right away, one guy goes, Rose! <laughs> and I started laughing my head off. I said, we just invented smell vision And then another yeah. person said, my coffee smells like flowers. Another person said they smelled and so on. I, I couldn't believe it. I go, from that point on, I said, wow, everything yeah. is possible. And yeah. what we learned from that little experiment is 432 hertz is a carrier wave with no time space, meaning it's instantaneous. Yeah, you go to the uh, end of the universe with it, like that. It, it doesn't matter where you are. It's instantaneous. So it's much faster than the speed of light. It's instant. That's what we've learned from that experiment. And it just blew us all away. So we put all these things together and we, now we have plasma and we, we interrelate plasma with all that because have you guys seen the 432 Hertz uh, uh, image from John Stuart Reed? No. Uh, Do you have a link? Um, let's see if I can find it here. <clears throat> One sec. Yeah. Uh, when he is looking, uh, is there somebody else that has some questions? I have a question. Sure. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Right. Uh, I have uh, sea gans in a glass bottle, mm -hmm. and uh, can I have a glass of water and then put that glass bottle in the water and get the effects? You the sea water gans bottle inside the other container? Yeah. Yes, of course. That'll transfer the energy. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, have so to. I don't Okay, yeah. So I don't need to have the water from the sea gas. No, no, just the transfers of energy. There, you got to remember a higher field strength in plasma. Uh, matter does not matter; it passes right through the matter. Okay. Yeah. Uh, does it matter <laughs> if uh, you nano coat the glass if it's possible? Um, yeah, but I can't see that's going to hurt it because you're just bringing it, bring it up to a higher field strength. Yeah. So it's yeah. not going to do any uh, damage. It's just going to probably improve it okay yeah okay um just one sec i'm trying to find this image i know i have it here somewhere yeah. mm. uh, do you have some receipt about how much uh sea uh should you use each hectare or decker area on the field well we're using the liquid plasma we're not using the actual gans no, but the liquid plasma. I have uh, 40 hectares of land I want to have uh, gans on, and uh, we are trying, starting now to produce uh, seawater gans. Uh, how do you guys water the fields? Uh, it's, uh, it's full of tanks, so, so I believe that uh, maybe uh, I was thinking of uh, maybe doing uh, some nano coating on this tank first. And then uh, and then spread it out. And of course, uh, whatever we put in, uh, it's the field who is going out to the uh, the water we have uh, mixed it with. So uh, so it's nearly the same how much we are putting into it, isn't it? Uh, yeah. What what I did uh, in Italy uh, where I was staying, they they all have water tanks. So yeah. I just got a, a plastic bottle. Yeah. And I put some seawater gans, filled some with water, and threw it in the tank. So all the tank water will be energized. Ah, yeah. okay. Okay. That's it's the done. easiest way. And then when you water your plants, they're all getting that energy. Yeah. Now, if you have some trees and stuff, you can make rings for the trees with some small vinyl tubing and, and fill it up with the liquid plasma. Maybe put just a little bit of, just a few drops of the actual uh, gans. Uh, and uh, put it around the tree. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so the tree gets the energy consistently always. Um, uh, 
I'm trying to find this thing. Uh, anything else? Yes, it's a lot of questions, but uh, <laughs> we need to... Uh, we have to test it out. Do you yeah, have some uh, scientific uh, evidence from any institutes or universities or agriculturists, whatever, that could... Is, uh, do you know if any agricultural school or scientist the centers have made any research and documentation about agriculture and uh, seawater GANs. Seawater GANs research? No, this is all new. Yeah, okay. Nobody did it yet. Seawater GANs? It were just the GANs itself? No, not that I know of. Like we were, I said, we were selling seawater, ocean water for agriculture, but we were not using GANs, we were using the actual seawater. We were diluting it and feeding it to plants. Oh, yeah. So it's rather new also for you because the uh, agriculture institutes and the authorities, they will ask for scientific uh, proof that it's a uh, significant uh, uh, result from it. So then uh, we could try in our way to get some uh, institutes uh, to control it. That this is a difference. If you want to do your own experiments, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, um, like me, for me, research of uh, mainstream science, to me, it's all garbage. I don't believe in any of it. It's all uh, based on yeah. uh, the, mighty, the mighty dollar. And uh, there's always interest involved in any researches. You just have to find who funded it. And then you'll see how the outcome uh, be becomes. Like, just give me an example. I'll give you an example. If I'm, a, if I'm a, a big corporation and I need a scientific study to be done, I'm going to hire somebody as a scientist. So I'll go to them and I'll say, this is what I, uh, my, my, my experiment I need to do. And this is the outcome I, I'm, I'm looking for. Now, if that scientist gives me an outcome that uh, I'm not happy with, how many times do you think I'm going to go back to hire him? <laughs> now, th just yeah. listen to what I just said. So you got to remember, this is how it works out there. This is what science is all about. And yeah, there's some uh, threads of truth to some of the science out there, but most of it is based on garbage. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's just because scientists need to work and need to eat and they need to get paid. So in order for them to keep their job, they need to keep their customers happy. <clears throat> In Norway, we have our own uh, scientific uh, organization with all the farmers. The farmers, they owning the scientists. And they are doing all the tests in the fields. We have the Arctic field area here with our climate zones we did for many years. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So we can use You're the same plants. You've been cutting out. As I didn't, we're I didn't hear. In Norway or in Europe, we have to use the that can survive during very short summer periods. So the Arctic climate, it's this uh, farmer own um, organization and I, to suggest um, this uh, test for them uh, so that could be the scientific proof that this is significant uh, difference from any other uh, result from uh, using fertilizer on the field. So therefore, I was asking if you had known any other. If there is no other, then of course we have to make it so it can be known out with all the farmers and also other people that have some gardening that uh, they can use this seawater uh, another way than uh, before and get the better results from the food and harvest food. Yeah, well, uh, like as, as I mentioned about science, you're, you're talking to the wrong guy. Um, I think paper is dead. It's stagnant. Um, this is how I teach all my uh, clients. Uh, the universe is always in motion. And uh, they, they, a lot of people keep asking me why, why I don't write a book because uh, I don't believe in books. They're dead. They're stagnant. Nothing is stagnant in the universe. Everything's in motion. So anything that's written on paper, I, I, I don't put too much... Uh, too much uh, interest into it anymore because uh, things are always moving and expanding and, and, and changing. 
uh, in a in a in a universal sense. So uh, you you need to ask scientists if you want looking for that stuff. I'm not I'm not that. I'm a, I'm the new scientist who uh, is looking at things at a different way, and uh, we use our homes and our kitchens as our science labs, and not we don't rely on uh, a white jacket type of science. Yeah. Uh, we were thinking of uh, how to spread it uh, around, and uh, if we don't have a universe for somebody to go uh, go into it, it's, uh, it's more difficult. It up, yes, we are doing it after all, but yeah. uh, we have to make it in a manner that they can see. Yes, here is the difference between fields that don't have guns on and fields that do have guns, because only well, with the pro proving the difference they will say, "Wow, this is something." And uh, yes, of course, we don't believe in scientists and all these corporations either. But we have to make it so there can be uh, at least uh, maybe 30 different farmers that have done it. So then it will be a big news. And then all the farmers all over the world, they need to have this proof uh, so they can say that, yes, wow, this we need to do. If they don't have the proof and references from others, they don't want to believe that it's uh, possible. Well, I'll tell you, um, Maynard Murray was a scientist and he funded all his own research. Um, he spent all his time and money on doing uh, research on ocean water. And uh, there's a lot of research that he's done and it's summed up in that book and uh, also from the stuff I've learned from Don Jansen who bought his farm. Now, with all that, research that I had and uh, all the science and everything else, it did not help me at all working with farmers. And then we had run uh, some of our own experiments with farmers doing tests and then we did some mineral analysis and the mineral analysis were like night and day difference uh, in the mineral uptake. Uh, but you know, these are things that uh, you can spend all your money and recent time on and they will not help you because we have a mentality of uh, of uh, of these uh, farmers mainstream farming uh, which is uh, in a state of uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for a state that they're not they really don't have the best interests of the consumer so I, I really, I, I don't see how any of that would help you guys uh, going to farmers. Um, unless these farmers are uh, of the heart and doing it because they love to do it and, and are doing it because they want to grow the absolute best food for their clients, for their customers, uh, you're going to be hitting your head against the wall. So I don't know what the type of farmers uh, mentality is in your area, but in here in Canada, and then uh, U.S. It's uh, pretty much similar, and uh, it's it's sad, but that's the way it is. Um, so, I, you guys have to find your way. Um, like I, I said, the, the Gans is all new. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't think it's about the farmers. It's about the political system that is bringing them and forcing them to go into this system and that they don't get the knowledge because it's not what the authorities want them to know. I, I understand that, but we all have souls and you know what's right and you know what's wrong. It's simple. So when you're, when you're buying ocean water to grow your own little garden to, for you to eat and you're not doing it for the rest of your acres and acres of crops that's going to be sold outwards, there's something wrong with that picture to me. Mm. So they that's it. They, they got to deal with it. It's their soul. I'm not, I'm not judging, but to me, that's not, I, I can never do anything like that. If, if so I'm going to be doing something for myself, everything that I'm going to be doing for any of my clients will always be the best possibly. Just like I work with my, uh, with my uh, clients in, in, uh, in the healing of the alternative uh, natural type healing. I, I, I provide the best possible uh, information and best possible products I can find or I don't deal with it at all. I don't have any, I don't want any interest in any of it, anything below the best. So, you know, I just started sharing uh, about seawater GANs with them and uh, already I'm getting great feedback from a few people that are starting to do it. So that's the way I work. Um, 
there, there's no other uh, alternative for me. Uh, everybody can do whatever they want. And yeah, the government puts pressure yeah. on everybody, but you don't have yeah. to do it. No, uh, the point here is uh, that we have all the data uh, that we can try it on. So, uh, so of course, uh, uh, it's big areas that we can try it on. Uh, and of course, because of that, we uh, maybe have a yeah, it's a better way to uh, to start to, to get it into the farmer. What uh, what do you guys doing? Uh, it's uh, for the. And therefore, we want to have uh, to test out this. I, I, and, uh, have I lost you guys. The, Your internet's cutting out. Picking up a lot now. Yeah, you're in. Can repeat because uh, your sound is good. I didn't hear anything. Your 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 internet's cutting out. Ah, it's our internet that cuts out. Yeah, your your video's freezing. So, it's, ah. I don't know. Is it or is it mine? I don't. Know. I don't think it's mine. I have very fast internet here. Yeah, uh, we should have that uh, through here. So, um, so it's uh, a kind of strange, but. Um, but that's what we have to get used to, maybe. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. There's many people who uh, don't want to want us to to do what we are doing, maybe. I'm trying to get it. Is uh, everybody else uh, hearing us good? Is it my internet or is it yours? Uh, because I think mine's is. Uh... Yeah, I see. Um, maybe it's, it's... I don't. I think it's good here. Yeah. I can take away. Anyway, uh, yeah, so... Uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, the most important thing is that, uh, that we are uh, trying to find out uh, what... Uh, can you hear me now? Or, um, yeah, what, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so maybe that's the uh, that's, uh, most important, that we are trying out uh, the stuff that you are telling us to. Uh, this with the deep sea, uh, we have some areas that we can really uh, uh, get down and get up some of the the the, uh, the water from uh, really deep. I was thinking of uh, uh, this is maybe 600 uh, meter. Uh, is that uh, something uh, you are thinking of, or uh, what depth? Uh, uh, yeah, is? if you if you go at least a hundred meters, that's plenty. Yeah, yeah. Then it's not a big problem because we have it right out here. Make sure you use a uh, a good uh, food grade type of hose. Yeah. Or if you can nano coat it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then it wouldn't matter. <laughs> Just so it doesn't leach. Yeah. It doesn't leach anything. Yeah. Uh, in if you run some caustic through it, you'll you know boiling caustic, you'll uh, nano coat it. So uh, yeah, these are uh, these are the things that I've uh, experimented with over the years. You know, ocean water frequency, and I've been involved in uh, in uh, natural healing for many 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 years uh, because of my own illnesses many years ago. So uh, that's uh, that's how I help people. Uh, I, I run uh, the master fast system uh, 
website and Facebook page. And uh, it's been, I, I put that online just over, just over a year ago. I did, I, uh, oh. Because people were uh, bothering me to put it, make it public because I used to do it basically on the private side. So I finally yeah. decided to put it online and then it started going crazy uh, just before, uh, what is it, just after Christmas, it started going crazy online. So there's uh, almost 2,000 people on there now. And uh, people are getting amazing results uh, because the program that I put together, uh, I don't know if you guys know about it. Uh, no, I haven't digged into it. Uh, deep, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Well, I, 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 uh, I put it together with the uh, little I know about plasma. Yeah. Um, uh, in, uh, in natural healing, uh, the way we help people is uh, we put them on a very strict diet of uh, fruit and herbs and nothing else. And uh, we put them on fasts, you know, no more eating. So I've been fasting for many, many, many years myself, since 25, almost 26 years. And uh, fasting is the ultimate way the body can heal itself when you do absolutely nothing. Now, in today's toxic world, it's, uh, it's very difficult because when you stop eating, the body goes into a strong elimination phase and healing. Very, very high levels of healing are happening when you stop eating. This digestion has to completely stop. And uh, it's, it's very unpleasant when the body's full of these toxins. So what we do is we do juice fasts. And my system is devised of uh, dark grape juice, which you purchase. And all bottled juices today are cooked. They're pasteurized. So the dark yeah. juice, the, the one I use is a Concord grape over here in North America, but there's many, many other ones you can use. You can use black cherry. You can use pomegranate. You can use uh, uh, many other types of grapes. The dark is one of the key ingredients and, and having some wild strain in it I found works better, which Concord has. And when you cook it, what happens to it, it puts it in a higher field strength. It's GAN state, plasmatic, more, more, it opens it up. So what I do is I add raw lemon juice to the uh, juice, to the dark grape juice, and it creates a strong plasmatic field strength. Now that's one aspect of the cleanse. And then uh, we have herbs that we also use. And uh, I have uh, herbal tinctures made. And herbal tinctures are herbs that are either raw, fresh, and or dried, which are infused in alcohol for at least 30 days. And they, they, these, are, these are medicines. And uh, so that's in a raw state. And then I have another part of the herbs we use to make a tea. And we focus on herbs for the kidneys because kidneys are king in Chinese medicine. We really focus on kidney function in, in this cleanse. So we mix those two together, a raw form of the herbs with the cooked tea, and we get another strong field interaction. So uh, that's two field interactions. And then there's a third aspect of the cleanse where we use a psyllium husk to uh, physically go into through the digestive system and, and scrape and absorb like a broom as it's going through. And what I mix with that is activated charcoal, another high field strength of GANS, and I mix it with the uh, clay, uh, manto morin light or benonite clay, which is light, and we have another strong interaction of field. So we mix the psyllium, the clay, and the uh, charcoal together. So there's three strong field interactions, which I call the Trinity. And these, these are what people are going on and they're doing these cleanses for a minimum of 40 days, 63 days, 90 days, or 108 days. And these things that people are releasing are incredible. They're removing through their GI tract dark black plaque that's been sitting in there for years and years and years which is the source of your physicality uh, diseases, but all the seed of diseases through the emotional. So then it gets manifested in the physical. But uh, people are getting amazing, amazing results on this cleanse. 
uh, in all types of diseases. I don't care what the name of the disease, we can help anybody. And uh, that's all they drink is uh, the juice, the tea, and the psyllium for these minimum 40 days. And uh, it really uh, does amazing things. It completely trans transforms people. You don't even recognize them after 30, 40 days. Uh, they, be, they look much younger, healthier, uh, more vibrant. Uh, somebody who's really, really uh, ill, sick, it might take them a little longer. Um, but that's why... I advise people to do a, one long one of at least 60, 90 days, and then uh, you keep it as part of your lifestyle, and you do two to four of them a year, at least 30, 40 days every year, two, 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 to, two to four times. And uh, we also have another aspect of this fast, which is called dry fasting, where you do absolutely nothing, just breathe air. And uh, we, every day we're doing a, at least a 12-hour window, because eight hours of that uh, is, is sleep, which you're dry fasting. You're not eating and drinking. So we're just extending your sleep hours of no eating and no drinking. And uh, I, do, I do normally about 16, 18 hours every single day, uh, no eating and no drinking. That's how I live my life. And then every week, we start people on 24 hours dry fast. So meaning no drinking, no eating for 24 hours. So you wake up, you get your breakfast, you drink, and then you don't touch anything till the same time next day. That's 24 hours. And slowly, surely, you increase your dry fasting hours every day and every week. So I typically, I'm doing 16, 18 hours every day. I do 48 hours every week without fail. Every month, we do a three-day, 72 hours. And every season change, we do at least five days. So I've, I've, I've done 12 days uh you know I'm, I'm right now i'm on another fast i'm at 28 days i think i believe or 29 days and uh you know so we do this continuously this dry fasting even when we start eating again we continue to keep dry fasting part of your lifestyle because it rebalances everything very very quickly it's the highest form of healing, doing absolutely nothing. And what are we doing? We're tapping into our own plasma. That's really what we're doing because you don't have to do anything. You're just using field strengths to activate the healing in your body. And what happens on, these, on this master fast that I put people on, pretty much everybody goes through very strong emotional releases. Almost, almost everybody. And that's where the seed of the disease starts. And that's what we need to get to, to, to heal. And as we heard Mr. Cash teach us, you know, the emotional, we have to get to the emotional, which is the spirit. So without touching that, you're not going to have much happening in the, in the form of, of your physicality healing. So my cleanse, it hits all aspects of, of the physicality, the, the mental aspect and, and the uh, spiritual aspect of the emotion. So it, it really works with all. And we hit everything from all the different angles. And, uh, you know, people are getting uh, amazing results. Uh, I had one guy in a wheelchair for three, four years of muscular dystrophy. On his 12th day, he took his first 12 steps. Uh, I had another fellow... With, uh, was in a parachute accident, hit the water at 80 miles an hour, was in a coma for 10 days, I believe. And he had, pro he had paralyzed, uh, half, half his body was semi-paralyzed, <clears throat> and he couldn't sleep through a night. He would get up five, six times to urinate. One month on the program, he's sleeping through the night, and uh, he's starting to get sensation back on his paralyzed side. He just finished a 12 and a half day dry fast and he's getting even more sensation back. So these, uh, I mean, these are just some few extreme cases. I have one guy in Germany who uh, they completely use this man. He's only 29 years old as a guinea pig. I've never, ever, ever heard of the extremities that they've put this guy through with experimentation of operations and stuff. They did laser experiments to remove his lymphatic, experimental, that less than 5% people would survive. He survived. They, they, they took out, I don't know how many tumors. They, they put him through chemo, radiation, and drugs, and so on and so forth. 
And he survived all that. And then he learned about me, and I put him on the master fast. And uh, he was he was uh, starting to improve, and the doctors are flabbergasted at how this guy is still alive. So I sent them two pain pads, uh, the ocean seawater pain pads, and uh, he was using them. And uh, he uh, he had taken a, a flip and hurt his leg, and he 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 could barely walk. He said he put those pads on the uh, injury. And then a couple of days, he was walking normal again. So <laughs> these are cases like uh, this. If this guy li survives, uh, I'll be surprised because they've, they've done so much damage to him. It, 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 it all depends on his will. That's what's keeping him alive. It's his will. Um, I will. If he survives, he survives. But it's an extreme, extreme. It's one of the worst cases I've ever seen. Let's put it that way. Uh, I had sent herbs to Germany. And uh, they they uh, they seized his uh, herbs, his tinctures. They kept them for like over two months, and then they said, "Oh, you know, you you can't have these. It's going to cost you two thousand dollars for us to destroy them, euro to destroy them, or we'll send them back for two hundred fifty euro." So they're on their way back now. Sad thing. And uh, he went to go pick dandelions because I said we we, we got to get you some herbs. So learn about the herbs that are growing in your area. And he went to go pick some dandelions. He got he got he got stopped, fined for criminal activity, twenty five hundred euro for picking dandelions. I've I've never heard anything like this. I don't know what's going on in Germany, but there, the people got to know about this. I uh, I, I I hopefully um, will be able to get this news out to people in the public because it's sick. What's happening there? It's very sick. Yeah. So um, that's a little bit about my background and what I do. So I, I help sick people. Uh, or help them. Or something, uh, that yeah. Can... yeah. It's called masterfast.yolasite.com. Can you write it? Can you write it? Yeah. Sure. Uh, in the same time, uh, is there somebody else that has some questions? Looks like so. What's going on here? Did you, uh, can you see that? Yes, yes. No. Yes. And uh, above, you can see from me to everybody, there is photos about the date on the link above. If okay. you're... I, I have a really hard time hearing you. There's an echo. Oh. Okay. Try to go, uh, the, <clears throat> the link above from me to everybody, everyone. If you press this link, you will see the photo about Gabe when he is collecting seawater here at Oh, Dunham. okay. Um, uh, but it was something, uh, the page uh, was not found, uh, 404, uh, on uh, your link there. The link didn't work. It was an error in your link. Okay, um, I don't know why I can't copy your link. It's strange. Uh, you need to have a Google account, sorry. Mm -hmm. If you have a Gmail account, do you have a Gmail account? A Gmail account? Yeah, but I can't even copy the link. It's uh, really strange what's happening here. Oh, it's so strange. Acting weird, my, I don't know. Maybe it's my computer. <clears throat> You can put it into Facebook, it'd be easier. I don't know, it's going really weird. <laughs> we, can, uh, yeah, we can put it on Facebook as well. Yeah, you can put it in Facebook. So it's, uh, it's not a problem. But the your link. Uh, yeah, let me try that again. Let me see. I'll try again. Did it come yeah. through? Yeah, it's 
Yes, uh, it was. It, it, it comes through. It comes through now. Yeah. Okay. You guys are able to click on that. Uh, not click on it, but uh, copy. We, we get it up. Yeah. Copy and yeah. paste. Now we have it. Yeah. yeah. Copy and paste. That's okay. Yeah, and I also have a Facebook called Master Fast System on Facebook. Okay, so that's that's where we. That's sorry. Yes, then we will be friends with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if, uh, anything else? Uh, that's uh, my basic uh, background uh, in. in uh, very quickly of what I uh, been doing the last uh, 25 years with uh, all this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, we are going to have the next uh, weekend. We are going to have a uh, have a conference mm -hmm. uh, here at Asta, and uh, then we will put uh, more people into this and try out. Uh, they will uh, will try it themselves. Uh, and in the same time, uh, we are going to test out uh, uh, the seawater we have from uh, from the area here. Uh, and uh, also, we can tell you about that. Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, do you have an email or something that uh, is maybe easier to send directly to you? Or yes, you uh, yeah. Of course, yeah. uh, I have uh, L, L as in uh, Larry, D Serio, D as in David, I, S, E as in Edward, R, I, O. So that's L D Serio at yeah. Yahoo, Yahoo dot C A as in Canada. Yeah. Oh. So ldserio at yahoo.ca. That's yeah. the email I use uh, mostly. Okay. And that's great. Uh, and uh, really, we have to thank you for, for your time uh, that you take. And uh, also, uh, we, uh, we, we really appreciate if you uh, can come back uh, too when we have uh, put together a bigger group. Uh, so uh, then we also maybe have more questions for, uh, for you mm -hmm. about coffee. Um, so uh, anyway, is it somebody else that have something uh, before we take uh, the Saturday evening? No, on the Saturday uh, Frederick, do you have something? Mm, uh, no. No. Uh, and board? I believe you have uh, gone through uh, a lot here, so they have a lot to to get uh, through their mind. Yeah, and there's a lot, of, a lot of info uh, yeah. put out together. But... So the the seawater gans, I guess, is what you guys are really focused on. And uh, like I said, I've had good results with it uh also uh in italy uh my my friend there is uh has started putting on his plants and he's seen a difference on his plants and he's taught somebody else how to do it and they've seen a difference uh you know these guys uh, they have fruit trees and all sorts of stuff they grow all types of vegetation so they're already seeing differences uh in their plants as i've seen in two weeks uh, when i sprayed all the trees and this is just with the liquid plasma. Uh, is it Barletta you are from? You I, was, your... I was staying in Barletta, but then, no, the last month I went to my children's grandmother's house, who's near uh, one hour south of Rome in the frozen wow. area. And uh, they have a property up in the hills. It's a beautiful property with all types of fruit trees. Oh, oh yeah, that's great. Uh, I was in Barletta and a little around. So... Uh, so it's a, it's a beauty of the city, Balletta, that's, uh, that's for sure. 
but uh, really, the, the way to go in Italy, I believe, is up in the hills and small cities. Yeah, I love the mountains and I love the sea. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, the sea is good too, but uh, the big cities, it was very uh, cold. Uh, the people was very cold. Uh, yeah. If you go to a smaller city, it's really something else. Yeah, I don't, I don't like big cities. Like Barletta is a, a little bit on the big side. It's got 100,000, but it's not like Rome. Rome's a few million. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, Barletta was not bad. And I like Barletta. It was just, uh, the, for me, the, the smell of uh, the fuel from the cars was really, really strong in the, in the town there in the city. Uh, yeah. the, the, the much stronger smell, especially the diesel, much more so than our, our fuel. It's got a really strong odor, the fuels in, uh, in Italy. Yeah, that was smell. Well, uh, I was thinking of what would this smell was, but uh, of course, you could do that. You know? Yeah, because all the buildings are close, and it yeah, it, does, it stays it stays in there. <laughs> if there's no wind, especially, it just stays there. Yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, it's great uh, anyway. Uh, so. Um, uh, we we will uh, contact you, and uh, if you have something that you want from Norway, and uh, of course, up in the sea water we have here, uh, we are we are pleased to help you with it. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. send send me uh, an email, and uh, I couldn't yeah. find that image on online. It's, I have it in my computer somewhere. <clears throat> I could send you the image of four three two. Yeah, it used to be all over the internet, but I can't find it. <laughs> no, we we have a lot of people who don't want it to go around. So maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll well, it's a uh, it's a copy written uh, image. That's uh, that's probably why it's not. You don't see much of it anymore. Yeah, oh, of course. <laughs> people want it. Why don't they just send it around? We are all in for it. That's Trademark, true. copyrights, it's uh, it's all based on the dollar, the mighty dollar. Yeah, but Luigi, uh, thank you very much, and we love you, that's for sure. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah, have a, have a great evening. Oh, it's, it's day. Daytime here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, bye, we have the sun all the way here. So. Yeah, it's so we, a beautiful we, sunny day here, too. Yeah. One is 24 hours a day, we have sun. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So the area is really, uh, it's really uh, it get a lot of energy from the sun all the time. So, uh, so it's special. Nice. We will just go to our hotel when he's holding the midnight sun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough to go to sleep with all this beautiful sun. <laughs> well, it's not a problem. If you uh, if you have worked a lot, you don't have. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> you know, it's the the feeling in your soul that uh, gives you the sleep when you sleep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's great. Uh, have a good evening. Okay. Bye. bye bye. Bye bye. See you guys. Bye. Bye bye. Uh, board, are you there? Ready? Can you do that? Yeah, hello, yeah, hello, hello. Yo, men bak är det bra? Ja, det var bra det här. Ja. Nu var jag på söndag också, då snackade också han Luigi, så jag har fått med mig. Ja, ja, riktigt. Du har fått med mig den, du. Ja, ja. Han, vi, fick inte, vi fick inte den linken till, till den, för vi var lite för sena. Vi har några hästar som tränger oss ut av och till här. Ja. Eller inte bara någon, men många. Ja, <laughs> det Han koka hade alla vinkarna, så vi hade mött där. Du känner till han? Florin? Ja, jag har varit mött han flera gånger också. Ja, ja. Så han var inte klar över den att du mötte här, men hon hade också varit med förra söndag med, med ja. 
Så det var tatt upptag vi tar det möte. Så vi blir enige om att vi lägger ut både det från förra söndag och så denna. Eh detta upptag är nu det han går som har tagit av upptag sin arbete. Eh så lägger vi det bara under den här länken och så har vi brukt av profilbilder av han gamer och han är så är van i då himnaja. Norges största ö i det arktiska stöt under mittnaturen. Ja. Så vi la en link där med masse bilder, altså, da, for å få det litt som ned på landjorda, at det ikke bare er utlandet som blir profilert hele tiden, og de her tradisjonelle bildene av fra Kersje, som har vi liksom prøvd å lage litt som lokalisering av event og aktiviteter. Så hvis du har aktiviteter som du har i ditt område, så må du gjerne dele, uansett sånn at vi får synliggjort aktiviteten innenfor det nettverket på Kersje Foundation Norge. Nå er det ca. 1100 medlemmer, og jeg ser på statistikken at det er opp i 800 som er inne og følger med hva som skjer innenfor dette, og antallet øker dag på dag. Og da er det viktig at vi viser til aktivitet. Og vi vil prøve nå fremover å også knytte til oss flere norske fagmiljø. Jeg hørte jo på en Louis at han var skeptisk til alt av forskningsmiljø, for det er at i Amerika så er det jo bare kommersiell forskning, det er kun oppdragsforskning. Og han kjenner ikke til det her norske systemet der vi bygger en grasrotforskning der det faktisk er lokale bønner som tar informativ til hva som er viktig å forske på. Og så er det under jordbruksavtalen at forskningsoppdragene blir finansiert. Og klarer vi nå fra Kersje Norge å få til slik grasrotforskning med å bruke eksisterende offentlige etater og offentlig finansiering for å kunne bidra til at andre land tar Kersje på alvor. For uten at vi bruker de dagens systemer innenfor vitenskapen, så lå vi så sakte frem. Men vi har en kjempefordel om vi kan jobbe litt og snakke deres språk, for å si det sånn. Det er nødt til å sette seg ned og bare være idealist. Vi må noen gang strukturere oss for å kunne bli oppfattet seriøst. Og det blir det ikke med bare idealisme. Nei, det er ikke sånn. Jeg er litt opptatt av at vi må få liksom laget noen strukturer og systemer sånn at det er spiselig for andre forskningsmiljøer i Norge å se nærmere på Kersje, fordi at de har noen konkrete resultater som kan være interessant for dem å se nærmere på. Og da vil det være lettere for entreprenører som har gode ideer på uansett hva slags produkter det skal være å produsere, å bruke de forskningsresultatene som grunnlag og dokumentasjon for deres eget produkt. For det er jo dansen som er den aktive aktivitøren, for å si det sånn, eller som er ressursen. Design er jo da entreprenøren sin det, hvis han skal ha et stempel for kjesje. Og det er ikke noe annet. Og styret i den stand blir jo da en slags kvalitetssikker og garantist for at deres produkter har følt kjesje sine oppstykker og har både effekt og at det er resultater etter det. Vi har jo en streng forbrukelov, så det får ikke være bare hummer og kanari. Så der må vi være veldig, veldig nøye. For det blir snakket om å etablere en egen sertifiseringsordning for alle de som har en god idé, god design, og de vil ha plassene inn i sitt produkt. Men hvis plassene ikke fungerer, så får de jo heller da ikke selge denne kjesje til utdelingen. Nei, viktig. Jeg tenker på å få tak i en ordentlig design innen for en mag av enhet og penner. Ja, en må jo ha en norsk variant. Ja, den der mag av enheten går det an å i hvert fall er det mulig å vertifisere om at det faktisk funker, eller bevise at det funker. Penner og padder er jo litt 
annerledes å kunne bevise. Ja, men det er vel også mye på grunn av vi har ikke funnet ut av hva vi i grunnen kan, kan bruke for å, for å i grunnen finne ut av hva som er av felt rundt det. Det vil nok komme det ut. Så bare vi fortsetter å produsere og, og gi vårt hjerte til hver enhet, så tror jeg jo at det vil gå snart opp. Mm. Ja. Men uansett, Fredrik, det var kjempe å se deg her. Det var godt å høre deg igjen. Det er lenge siden. Ja, takk i like måte. Hvis du, hvis du er rett på Toto, så er du hjertelig velkommen opp i Harstad neste helg. Vi prøver jo da å få til en liten samling, sånn at han går, kommer oppover, og han er jo her, og jeg er her. Og han, Florin, han hadde ikke mulighet. Han skulle til en, en barndag i Romania neste helg. Og så snakket med han Roy Hart. Han bor på Bekkestua i Oslo. Og han vil nå ha sett om det finnes tog eller en rimelig måte til han å komme opp over tid. Han ble veldig, veldig glidig på å komme til Nord-Norge. Mm. Vi holder på å snekke det sengeplasser. Om det ikke er sengeplasser, så har vi i alle fall madrasser rundt og tenkt på eller satt opp et telt på fjellet. Det er, det er tross alt midnattsomt, så det er jo noe jeg må oppleve i, i livet sitt, så lenge ja. du er en. <laughs> og, og det som er det, det er at uh, nå, neste helg, så starter festfyllene i Nord-Norge. Det har jeg jo glemt å la oss ut på den andre Facebook-siden vår. Og da er det jo høydepunktet i Nord-Norge med alt av kulturelle aktiviteter og alt som kan leve og gå av kulturell betydning i Nord-Norge, de møtes i Barstad. Og så er det jo fantasaten da ute etter. Så hvis du har mulighet, så er det bare hit seg rundt og kommer oppover. Og han bor, han er nå i Hutte for Trondheim på stoet. Så han kommer vel i løpet av uka, for det hadde vært så fint om vi kunne satt oss ned i lag og møttes, og at det ikke bare var via Zoom og telefoner, men å kunne gå gjennom disse statuttene for etableringen av, eh, av cashet. Sånn at, og, og sånn at vi kan på en måte fordele litt sånn arbeidsoppgaver om hva vi har lyst til å eh, fokusere på. Sånn at internt i styret kan det være forskjellige roller. Han går, han hadde veldig lyst til å ha ansvar for for eksempel utdanning. Han har gått gjennom kanskje instituttet sine på 40 ukes kurs. Og har vært nå i Filippinene og sett på denne simulasjonsavdelingen der. Og han, Geir, han kom jo da rett fra Roma. Men det er sånn et tid til gammel som har vært her hos meg nå i 14 dager, så vi har begynt å lære hverandre å kjenne. Og han, har jo, han er jo helt utrolig, han ser jo hva jeg kommer til kort med i forhold til at jeg har tusen prosjekter på gang. Det er jo sånn, når man først har mange ting. Så han har jo begynt å snekke på et hus som jeg har sagt, det må være da kjersehuset i fremtiden. Sånn at vi har overnattingsplass, at folk er på samme arena og derfor måtte leie seg inn på hotell i byen. Og gården ligger på en unik plass rett ved sjøen, og vi har en innsjø, vi har til og med et fjell av glimmer. Som vi har hule og grater i, og, og hvis at denne gården kan være et bidrag for å skape den innovasjon og nære til natur og dyr, så er Harstad oljehovedstaden i Nord-Norge, og Harstad må være den som da får en skikkelig kontrastmiljø, og det kan vi være her. Og det tror jeg blir viktig i miljøet gjennom Kersje. Jeg har holdt på å snakke fire år og lete etter fornybar energi. Hva skal skape bærekraftige samfunn? Og vil jeg bruke gården da som en slags miniatyrsamfunn, som en case. Man kan bare jobbe der man har mulighet å bidra til endring. Da må man starte med det man har. Først med seg selv, og så videre til de nærmeste. Og så prøve å se om det er flere som synes ideene er interessant. 
Mm. Uh, Vad like, uh, rir du? Har du rid någon gång? På häst? Ja, <laughs> ja på häst. <laughs> ja, ja, det är er en stund sedan, men jag har gjort det en gång. Ja, det är er, ja, jag har väl gjort det en gång här länge sedan. Hur kan du tänka det? Upp på hästen ryggen och så upp och så ta med tent och så bara lägga sig upp och heja. Ja, det är så. Helt och hållet. Så, så verkligen, om du om du ser möjligheten så så hör vi gärna på det. Ja, när var det här? Var på lördag? Ja, det är er nästa helg. Nästa helg. Ja. ja jag ska ta så se lite på det här så så se hur de ligger med priser och sånt. Ja. Man kommer upp. Ja, hur du hur du bor nåna? Jag bor i Bærum, Oslo. Okej. Okay. Ja, då blir det ju någon vitsinfli eller fråga till Fuske och så bussen där i så eller det fråga till Bode och dukar ut att ta Bode till Hasta men då måste vi starta och resa på tisdag senast. Ja, men det passar inte jag ska på jobbet till fredag. Ja, men det hörs så gott. Det är lättast att komma hit på utan att ska bo i dag och bo. Ja. Mm. Men hur länge jag vill Kan jag är det såna att jag kan vara där då? Är det från Ja, Ja, vi har en bil vi ska hämta i Haugesund så vi skulle ha lust att kan du hämta den alltså. Vi betalar bensin och allt så då. Då är det att du får en körtur nog då. Men bilen Haugesund, ja. Er det et døgn, eller ikke? Jo. Den er klar til å hentes. Jo, du må regne med et døgn i kjøring. Ja. Men da får du se hele Norge på land. Ja. ja. <laughs> det er jo fordel av ulen på meg mest. Ja. Men til henne, hvis at du kjører, så kan han ikke ha bekkeskuer også ha vært med, for han hadde lyst til å komme, han går i hav. Mm. Ja. Så har dere vært to som kjørte bilen nordover. Og har du fått en bil nå, så har du en egen kjørsebil her oppe. Uten å være avhengig av å låne bil du ikke kunne få på. Men uansett, Fredrik, du så e-mailen min der, Geir Andal, Gmail, ne? Ja, jeg tror jeg sendte en mail allerede. allerede. Ja, ja. 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 Mm. Jo, det er bare jeg er på hos sin PC nå, eller det er den vi... De Den kastar ut på så. Så den är er grej. Men uansett, då blir vi klocka fem år så. Ja. Ja. Så så tänker jag väl på det och så och så tar vi kontakt med dig om uansett angående det med och så får det in i fyra. Uh, ja. Jag får höra. Så ska jag ibe sig om jag kommer upp eller inte så fort jag vet. Jag tänker på han, alltså Bäckerstua, då är det också två i Oslo. Ja. Och då kunde det också ta, ska vi närmast till Haugesund eller Tågde? Ja, det är det. Nej, Haugesund. Det är väl flyg där, vad vill du tro? Ja, flyg till Haugesund och så spandera all den sin utgifter nog då. Ja. Ja, det är många möjligheter för det. Ja, jeg skal ta seg og tenke litt på å høre med han og Roy, det. Ja, ja. Du, du kjenner han fra før, da? Ja, jeg har møtt han også. Jeg ja. bor like nær for han, så. Ja. Han, han virker veldig gir den der skatta med han på telefonen. Han har aldri vært i Nord-Norge, så. Ja. Men nu har du sjansen. <laughs> ja, han ja, kan kanskje gripe noe, altså. Ja, det var da kalt det igjen. Ja, ja. 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 Mm. Yes. Ja. Ja, det er ja. for i dag. Ha en god lørdag. Ja. Ha det bra. Ha det.